On this special episode of Supercars Talk, I chat to a man who plays with kids' toys. On this special episode of Supercars Talk, we are chatting with that slot car guy. Um, I've known Trev for many years. Uh, we used to work together. Uh, <laughs> I'm just laughing because his name is actually Trav, um, but we used to call him Trev at work because uh, someone couldn't pronounce Trav. Uh, <laughs> so that's a little bit, little bit of an inside joke there. Uh, good old Ronnie. Um, so uh, Trav runs a, as the name suggests, a YouTube channel about slot cars. Um, you know, those little scale extrics toys that a lot of us had when we were children. Um you know, Trav's kind of grown up and uh, yeah, now he's uh, just a big kid really. Um, but we're not talking about that today because uh, this is Supercars Talk. So we're just going to talk about road cars because uh, somehow that fits into the schedule, um, you know, while, while we're in lockdown and we're not actually having any racing. Um, so you, your uh, first car was actually quite an exciting one compared to what a lot of people have had. Well, uh, really, I mean, a lot of our cars were quite boring compared to, you know, some of the excitement with yours. So, um, yeah, so basically, what was it? And, um, yeah, why did you choose it? So, oh, what was it? So I'm probably going to get a lot of hate because the car, I guess it's known now, but I had a Ford TX5, which was a five-door front-wheel drive, 2.2-litre, uh, I think, turbo. So, and I think mine was white over grey, two-toned, which is very nice. But it's not the TX3. So when I talk about my car, everyone thinks it was the TX3, the little hatchback. But this was the, the five-door hatchback. So I don't know if it was a cool car, Dave, but it was a car. <laughs> well, <laughs> it was a car. Well, see, nowadays you look back and you you like those, you know, the TX5 and the TX3 and that are kind of a, a classic car now. Whereas I suppose back in it, it was for people who couldn't afford a VL Turbo um, Back in hey, those days. Hey. <laughs> They're fighting words, Dave. They are fighting words. No, look, it was a cool car. I think a friend of mine at the time, he had a black one, I think it was. And, you know, as we all do, I jumped in it and loved it. So I searched for one. And I think I paid $12,000 back when I was 18. So in today's money, it's probably worth the same, to be honest. Um, but no, I don't, I don't know why I chose it. Yeah, probably worth more now. Uh, mine wasn't because I can get into what happened to mine. But um, <laughs> Definitely mine's not worth 12,000 now, but... So so what did actually happen to yours in the end? So uh, I think we can... I'll build up to that. So I think... All right. Uh, <laughs> let's just say at the time, the TX5 was a was actually a pretty popular car. People were starting to get into it and going, hold on, this thing's got 2.2 litres and it goes okay. And of course, my biggest rival was a VL Turbo, as you said before, we, forever, uh, meeting up with them at the car meets. And of course, I was getting beat, but... Um, I think people wanted parts. There were cars that were people were trying to collect. So one morning I remember lying in bed, uh, young Trav, no wrinkles, you know, long hair, no hat. And I remember my mum kicking my door in, literally kicking my door in, saying, Trav, someone's in your car. And I've got up in my jocks and obviously half asleep and I've run out to the front of the house and all of a sudden I see my TX5 launch off the front lawn and into the distance. So someone liked it that much, they thought they'll just take it, which, you know, that's okay. Leave the money in the uh, letterbox, but they didn't. Uh, so they happily took the car and it was in a car chase, I believe, all the way through the suburb of Bayswater, which you would be familiar with. Mm. And um, they never caught it because uh, I like to think that the mods I put on the car helped it get away from the police, but unfortunately uh, it got stolen. So it was a sad day, but there was a happy ending to it because... Um, I think Christmas that year was close to Christmas. I found a letter in my letterbox and someone says, I have the keys to your car. And I'm thinking, no, the car's in the driveway. I didn't think it was the TX5. And anyways, I rang him and he said, I've got this beautiful stripped out TX5 in my driveway. So I went and saw it. Of course, it was my car, sunroof gone, turbo gone, engine gone, and someone sold it to the local wrecking yard. And of course, this guy thought it was a good shell and purchased it. So I did get to see it again, but... It wasn't moving, unfortunately. Not, not quite the same after all of that. No, mate, lots of tears, lots of tears. So um, I, I suppose uh, some of these questions there are a bit redundant 
uh, now that we know what happened. Uh, ah, but, <laughs> spoiler alert! Spoiler alert! Um, well, what what um, what what was the first modification you did to it, and what was probably the best modification you did to it? A massive front mount intercooler, and that was the thing back then. Cut the front bar, so I literally squared it off and just chuck, chuck the biggest. I think it was a three core bar and fin intercooler, and. It did nothing for the car, but it, geez, it looked cool. It, it was full VL, cut the front bar out was spec as well, wasn't it? It wasn't, yeah. it, there was no hiding it. It was. <laughs> no, 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 no. I was trying to, I was trying to live in your shoes. But the funny thing was because it was front end heavy, it was like a, a drag car driving forward because this big cooler was weighing down the front bar. But no, that was my first mod. That was the first yeah. mod I did. That was and the first mod. What, what was the best mod? That one, obviously, because it showed no. that it was turbo. <laughs> It was turbo. Uh, I think the best mod was because I think I put a big, you might have to tell me the brand, I can't remember, the big uh, shifter with the shifter light. What was that brand called? Oh, the, um, like the, the Monster Taco. Yes, I put one of them in there, painted it white, had it like in the view so I couldn't see the front of my car. And when I'm driving, there's a big Monster Taco here. That yeah. was my favourite add-on. Did nothing to the car. And, yeah, no. but it blinded you at night when you um, hit the red line. Yeah, yeah, it, well, it looked cool. It was with those big flashes of orange as I'm driving down the road and only doing 80 k's per hour because it wasn't that fast. <laughs> but no, there was a couple of mods done, but uh, the best was probably the cooler. I enjoyed putting the cooler on it. Um, what, what parts didn't work on the car? I know, like, first cars have always got their issues that you never kind of fix up. Was there anything that didn't no. work? Yeah. To be honest, other than blowing a gearbox, that didn't work very well. Um, that mm -hmm. was the only thing that didn't work at the end because being a front wheel drive, you know, all the powers at the front, I blew one gearbox and I think I damaged a wheel hub and the ABS sensor, which I had to do a, yeah, yeah. a gearbox change in my driveway. Uh, everything else worked fine. It honestly was a really good car. No leaks, sunroof was good. Jeez. I actually cracked it. I actually had a crash and it was really, really strong. Uh, yeah, this yeah. car sounds like now but it's not <laughs> but no everything worked it was ford mate it was ford built tough yeah um, unlike say some of the au falcons and that that we had at work at the time that constantly oh, had... Fight <laughs> words, mate. i had an au you know i like <laughs> au's and i've had an au and i loved it i love the au but we won't get into that's another story um this is uh one that we probably shouldn't uh, publicize too much but what was the fastest you ever drove in the car 80 k's, Dave. 80 k's. <laughs> <laughs> Full of record, 80 k's. Um, and I heard you got uh, pulled over doing that 80 k's as well. No, wrong car. Wrong car, oh. Dave. That was, that was a skyline. That's a different story. We're going down the rabbit hole. That was 80 k's as well, Dave. 80 k's, remember that? Yep, yep, yep. Too bad it was like a 40 zone or something, was it? <laughs> Oh, it was a 75 zone, I think. Yeah, it was, I think so. Yeah, yeah. Any we'll, cases along we'll, we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll leave it at that. Um, Thanks, mate. <laughs> well, was the car a chick magnet? Did, I'd did say at you... the time it was. Yep. Did I pull the chicks? <laughs> oh, well, probably. No, not really. Um, but was the arm was... hanging out the window? No, I wasn't an arm hanger. I don't know why. And I wasn't a seat back guy either. I think I thought I was like a race car driver, so I wanted to be up near the steering wheel, I was never an arm out or a, yeah, it was weird. And my chair, like I said, was always, I must have looked like a bit of a, a knob it, driving it, past like this. Embrace the full VL turbo, you know, front man in school, uh, seat laid back kind of life. The 80Ks, that's all I wanted to experience, <laughs> that full 80Ks. And I wanted to hang on for dear life. But uh, that was a really good car. I actually, I do miss it. I am, I'm actually looking for more at the moment because they are collectible, but very hard to find. Very well, there wasn't find. that many of them really for, what it was, it's not like there was thousands of them, like you come into no. Falcons at the time. So you're right, yeah, you're right. Would be very hard to find. And then manuals again. I think there was a series one and a series two. And here I go getting into mm -hmm. oh, the back lights were like a bit of a, a teardrop for the series two, and the series one was like a night rider light. But manual as well it was very hard to find a manual in any series. So mm -hmm. yeah, I'm a bit uh, bit disappointed that the car's not sitting in my garage anymore. But anyways, yeah. we got well, old. You've got, you've got some other ones. So um, the the, um, the the questions, uh, why did you end up parting ways? Well, that one's been covered and obviously- My you choice. Would, <laughs> you, you would buy another one. Um, but yep. Have you got any like memorable stories? Like did you go on any big road trips or anything like that? Uh, 
I think when I was lucky when I was younger, and, and same as you were around the same age, I think I'm a lot younger than you. But um, it doesn't show. No, it doesn't show. I've had a hard life. The the car scene when I was younger was really good. It was, I mean, look, it's different today where, you know, there's, there's the hoon theory. But when I was younger, the car meets were, were really, really good. So I think just going to a car meet every weekend, Chapel Street, I mean, you'll be aware of Chapel Street. I think it took me 45 minutes to get from one end to the other and there was no traffic in front of me. That so was not a no good thing. night. Well, yeah, but there's no traffic. So you, you're only doing yeah. three Ks because you want everyone to look at you and no one yeah. looked at the TS5. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I do miss that. That's why that was, there were some good times there. Hmm. Hmm. All right. Well, um, that's it's it's been great having you on. Um, Thanks, mate. We'll plan to have uh, some other chats soon. Uh, so thank you very much for that. No worries, mate. Take care. So that was my chat with Trav uh, about his first car, a uh, Ford TX5 Telstar. Um, hopefully uh, we can tee up some stuff in the future uh, with some other car stories of his because uh, he has got some funny car stories over the years. He's uh, had some, definitely some interesting and different cars <laughs> over the years. Um, and we did have a little bit of a chat after doing the filming um, when he did recall uh, that maybe it was the TX5 that he was going a little bit faster than his 80 kilometres in um, and yeah he didn't have to worry about driving the car for uh, a, a period of time afterwards because uh, the government took away his permission to drive uh, but that was Trev and his first car I should be doing a few more of these over the next couple of weeks. Uh, so let me know if you've been enjoying them. And if you have, definitely keep an eye out for them. Uh, until next time, I'm still Dave and I'll catch you later.